الذين ينضموا للاستماع الى راديو بلدي اول راديو عربي امريكي ويعنى بقضايا الحرب في المحشر. برامجنا في راديو بلدي كل يوم جمعه من الثامنه وحتى التاسعه صباحا مع ليلى الحسيني في بث حي ومباشر وعبر دبليو ان زي كي راديو 690 اي ام صباح الخير بلدي صباح الخير لكل مستمعينا. Welcome to Radio Baladi, the first Arab, Middle Eastern and American simulcast radio show. Radio Baladi is broadcast every Friday morning on WNZK 690 AM from 8 until 9 Eastern Time on Good Morning Michigan with Layla Al Husseini. Our call in number 248-557-3300. And now, stay tuned for the best radio talk show on Arab and American issues with your host, Layla Al Husseini. <laughs> morning and thank you for tuning in. This is The Local Connections with Khalil Hashim, editor of yamichigan.com, fastest growing digital magazine, business magazine in the Middle Eastern communities in Michigan. This show is brought to you in cooperation between yamichigan.com and U.S. Arab Radio, the best ethnic radio in North America. Before we start, I just want to send a special thank you to the founder of U.S. Arab Radio and one of the hardest working journalists in our community, and it is Laila al Husni. Thank you so much, Laila, for making this show possible. Today is Friday, September 27, 2019. The weather is nice and cool. The temperature is expected to reach uh, in the mid-70s, a great fall day. Hope you are having a great driving time this morning. I also want to say good morning to our great producer, Mike. Good morning, Mike. How are you today? Good. Good morning. Wonderful. Wonderful. Thank you so much for all you do for us. Uh, Thank you. The number here is uh, 248-557-3300. Give us a call if you have a comment or a question. Whether it's in Arabic or in English, we'll be more than happy to uh, to to answer it or uh, take your comment as well. Now, there's a lot of news today from impeachment to health news to tech news to a lot of stuff going on. We wanted to focus today on an important subject, and that is the subject that is sweeping the nation and could affect our kids. We're talking about vaping. Originally, e-cigarettes were supposed to help smokers kick off the habit. You know, it was uh, when it was first introduced, it was this great thing that, you know, smoking people can use this e-cigarettes that could help them, you know, phase into, you know, phase the cigarettes out and hopefully kick the habit and move on to something else. However, somebody figured out along the way that they can add flavors and they can add this and they can add that to it, and it became morphed into a different industry. The problem with that is that starting that those flavors and you know became more or less like a fad among young people. So far, we've had 11 people die in related to vaping incidents, and many, many more have been injured. We asked our friend uh, from the American uh, Cancer Society. Cliff Douglas, he is the American Cancer Society's Vice President for Tobacco Control and Director of the ACS Center for Tobacco Control. He's also an adjunct professor in health management and policy at the University of Michigan School of Public Health and a longtime director of the University of Michigan's Tobacco Research Network and is a smoke-free and it's smoke-free environmental law project. He received his undergraduate and law degree degrees from the University of Michigan. You know, he's, a, he's a 30 years, uh, 30 year veteran of tobacco wars. Uh, Cliff, good morning. Good morning. Thank you for having me this morning. I, I want to thank you so much for taking the time to be with us and, and to address this important issue. Is there anything I haven't uh, mentioned in regard to your background and the organization that you'd like to share with us? Well, thank you. Uh, as you noted, I've been working on this for several decades, and uh, through the American Cancer Society and the University of Michigan. I will note that uh, from the perspective of the American Cancer Society, our mission is to eliminate cancer as a, as a major health problem by preventing cancer and diminishing suffering from the disease. We work on research and education and service. And importantly, our top priority is ending the tobacco epidemic since cigarette smoking remains the leading preventable cause of death uh, in the U.S. and also globally. It's responsible for almost a half a million deaths 
uh, in our country here every single year and almost 30% of all cancer deaths. So, so that's what we focus on. Wonderful. Again, uh, you know, thank you for being with us. Uh, we really appreciate your time. So we're, we're, I mean, we were dealing with cigarettes, and, and now we're dealing with a totally, totally different issue, mm. which is turned out to be maybe worse than cigarettes, uh, because people think it's okay. Uh, could you please uh, shed some light on the issue? Absolutely. Well, first of all, let's make sure we know what we're referring to. When we talk about e-cigarettes and vaping, we're talking about a great many things. Um, e-cigarettes are different from conventional burn cigarettes because what they do is they heat a liquid into an aerosol, which people refer to as vapor, although it isn't uh, harmless water vapor, as you've noted. And the, the mm -hmm. user inhales that. And they take many forms. They can look like USB flash drives, and they can look like regular cigarettes or cigars or, or hookah. Uh, and about 10 million adults today, or about 3%, are using these products. Uh, and as you said correctly, in many cases, to try to quit smoking regular cigarettes. But in terms of the current crisis, there is great concern that vaping more than doubled among teenagers in the past two years. So there are now about 5 million high school students uh, using these products. And the latest report from the University of Michigan shows that about 25% of high school seniors and even close to 10% of eighth graders have reported using these products in uh, the last month. And these products are highly addictive. Most of them um, have nicotine. And we're very concerned about the effect on addicting uh, children and, you know, even, even interfering with their brain development, which nicotine uh, can do. Now, almost separately, but it's what's getting a lot of headlines right now, as you noted, uh, there, there have been more than 800 cases of severe lung illness reported from uh, some of these vaping products, including uh, a growing number of deaths. There are now actually, I think, 12 as of the last day um, in 10 different states, although no, no deaths within Michigan. And the thing is that health officials haven't identified a single product or a substance linked to these cases. But, but here's something that a lot of people really do need to understand is the, the FDA commissioner told Congress on Wednesday that about 70% of these cases involve vaping products containing THC, which is the psychoactive chemical in marijuana, and it, it appears that most, if not all, of these illnesses are resulting from a kind of street version of, of vaping products or e-cigarettes, uh, kind of on the black market or the kind that people can, can uh, adjust and then add other chemicals to. Um, it, they don't appear to be, we're not positive, but appear to be happening from the mass-marketed, uh, you know, popular e-cigarettes that children uh, tend to be using. So that's, that's not a great thing, but it may be an encouraging thing if they can get these street products under control. You know, not long ago, I really had no idea what these little USB-like devices were. And I would see them on the streets and in cafes and all like, What are these? And I thought they were, you know, they were like somebody lost their USB connectors. And, and, you know, people start laughing at me. They said, no, these are e-cigarettes. I see them a lot more now than before. Is it more yeah. common than we think? Yeah, I think it's quite common now. And um, adults use them as well, by the way. So uh, the company that made those uh, very famous uh, or infamous in certain cases is Juul, J-U-U-L. I think if people have seen e-cigarettes, they've probably seen Juul. Many of them are these U.S devices, although there are now, people have to know, a lot of copycat uh, devices, and they're very easy to use. Uh, they're kind of clean looking, they're slick, they look high tech, and they're very easy to hide. So when kids are using them, they can be using them uh, in, in their classrooms. They can be, you know, frequently using them in, in bathrooms, and you can kind of hide them in, in your palm. Now, that's, that's really kind of changed the dynamic here, and the thing is that Juul also engineered these products to contain more nicotine. And, they're, and the nicotine is delivered chemically in a form that reaches the brain faster. So uh, that's terrible for our kids. Now, it may actually be, by the way, and we have to recognize this, useful for some adults. And you touched on sure, this at the sure. beginning. Yeah. Uh, if, if, if an adult is trying to uh, wean themselves from smoking conventional burn cigarettes, which by far are the worst product because they deliver 7,000 chemicals, 70 of those chemicals are known to cause cancer uh, in human beings. Um, 
there's a lot more stuff coming out of conventional cigarette than out of uh, any cigarette. So, uh, you know, adults using oh. those to try to get off cigarettes, that's one thing. But our kids should never be exposed to nicotine or Not these products. <clears throat> and now, you know, I mean, to buy cigarettes, you would have to have an ID. You have to have certain age. You have to have, I guess, we, to buy these things, there's no regulations. You just go and buy them. There, there's right. a minimum age. And, um, in fact, in, in a growing number of states and, and localities, the, the minimum age has been increased to 21. And everywhere else, uh, it is at least 18. And so when kids are getting these products, uh, typically it's in violation of the law. And, you know, what we feel strongly about is uh, the folks who should be held accountable for that legally are the, the adults who are selling those products to them. But we do feel that it's, it, we, and we know that it's effective in helping prevent access if the minimum age is raised to 21, which is, is increasingly popular today. Sure. I mean, I noticed, that, like, I talk to my son about it almost every day. My son is 13. And he mentioned to me that he's seen, he's seen people in middle school using it. And, yeah. uh, you know, I mean, the issue is, and correct me if I'm wrong, it seems to be people really did not, don't, do not know a lot about it, do not know a lot about the danger. They think this is, like, just a thing that gets kids playing with. Is, is that correct? Yes, yes. And, and, you know, my son is 16, and so a little older than your son, uh, but he's also experiencing this. He's seeing uh, many, many friends use these products. Um, you know, smoking has become quite unpopular. The conventional cigarette smoking has become quite unpopular among uh, our children now. And by the way, that's something we shouldn't overlook. That's actually extremely good news. Um, the, the same report from the University of Michigan that found that increasing vaping found that smoking among uh, high school students is now down to about 5.5%, which is down from about 8% just one year ago. And that's remarkable. Um, and by the way, adult smoking is also down now to about 14%, which is the lowest in many decades. So we're making progress there. But in terms of vaping among kids, they don't think it's the same as smoking. Uh, you're exactly right. They regard it in too many cases as safe. Uh, some kids today still don't know that many, not all, but many e-cigarettes contain nicotine, which is, is about the you know, most highly addictive drug uh, uh, on earth. And they don't know that they, uh, they are likely to harm them. And so uh, we uh, are working very hard with many other public health partners uh, around the country to educate the kids and educate their parents uh, about the fact that no child should ever be exposed to nicotine. And our kids uh, do need to, to come to understand that uh, this isn't some far-off abstract thing. You know, th they could harm them when they start using them. It's not like it's going to happen in 20 years. What do, you, what do you recommend we, we say to our kids? Well, what do, we, what do you recommend we say to our kids? Yes. Yeah. yeah uh, you how, know, how, do you, how do you address it? Well, there are a couple of messages. First of all, uh, nicotine is highly addictive. And one of the things that, that our kids we have found really don't like is the notion that, uh, you know, some... Uh, corporation, some company who's just trying to make a lot of money is going to, you know, manipulate them or exploit them and take advantage of them. And, and that's, that's actually essentially what's happening here. Kids are being targeted through aggressive advertising. The products are being manipulated to, uh, to cause addiction. And, and so, you know, that's one message. And another very simple one is it looks harmless, it looks cool, but you know, think about what you really want to put in your body. Um, you wouldn't just inhale something poisonous into your body, you know, would you? Uh, but that's basically what you're doing with this product. And they're lying to you, you know, the, the manufacturers, when they send the message that, oh, this is harmless or it's cool, um, and they use flavors, which is a big problem right now, to, to try to, you know, make it taste or smell good because they're covering up the poison when they do that. Is the state doing enough? Is the governor doing enough? You know, well, you know, Michigan's, Michigan's governor, of course, um, has issued an emergency order because of her great concern uh, over the youth vaping problem to uh, prohibit the use of flavors in these products uh, for a period of, a, of six months, uh, hoping, we're all hoping that the Food and Drug Administration will take steps to to get this problem under control 
and eliminate the use of flavors in these products that can appeal to uh, kids. Uh, the states are never doing enough, quite frankly, but I think aggressive actions like that one uh, at least are taking seriously the severity of this problem. And so it does give us some hope that we're going to you know, be fighting back now to protect our kids against exposure uh, to, to these products. What do we need to do on the national level? Do we need to talk to our Congress people, to our representatives, uh, senators, so we can put more pressure on them to do something? Sure. Uh, you know, on a couple of levels, and let me actually start with the personal level. Um, you know, health officials have warned people uh, not to buy vaping products on the black market or to modify them in any way. So um, if any of your listeners are using these products, um, be careful about what, you know, what you choose to use. And, and the American Cancer Society, of course, strongly recommends that children and, and teens and young adults never begin using uh, any product that contains nicotine, vaping or, or smoking. Um, yeah. the, the thing is that uh, when it comes to our elected representatives, I think it is important to contact uh, members of Congress or even your state legislators or state senators uh, and urge them to support uh, you know, stringent laws, stringent measures to make sure that kids cannot get their hands on these products as easily as they do uh, now. They really should be sold only uh, in, in places where adults will get them, not over the counter uh, at a 7-Eleven or at a gas station, for example. And, and measures can be taken to prohibit that kind of sale. Sounds good. Do you have time to stay with us for a few more minutes? We've got to have Dr. Maliko from the uh, uh, school, Dearborn Schools with us. Oh, I would be delighted. Thank you. Okay. Please stay tuned. We're going to take a short break. We'll be right back. Life is a nonprofit charity that's provided humanitarian aid and development to people and communities for over 25 years, regardless of race, color, religion, or cultural background. When disaster occurs here or around the world, Life for Relief and Development rushes in to provide food, medical aid, and shelter to those in need. Please help improve these efforts. Make your tax-deductible donation to Life now at lifeusa.org or call 248-424-7493. Kashat's Mediterranean Market and Shish Kebab offers a great array of your favorite Mediterranean meals. Meals range from lamb specialties, shawarma sandwiches, seafood dinners, and they offer special big trays of your favorite food, plus much more. Kashat's Mediterranean Market and Shish Kebab address is 32839 Northwestern Highway in Farmington Hills. Their phone number is 248-538-9552. That number again is 248-538-9552. And the supermarket is open from 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. Kashat's Mediterranean Market and Shish Kebab will definitely leave you satisfied. When it comes to reproductive medicine, IVF Michigan Fertility Centers are the recognized leaders. With locations in Bloomfield Hills and five other cities in Michigan and Ohio, IVF has experts in all aspects of the field. As a founding member of IVF Michigan Fertility Centers, Dr. Nicholas Shama is one of the leading reproductive endocrinologists in Michigan and Ohio. Dr. Shama has performed over 10,000 IVF cases and has helped thousands of couples fulfill their dreams of parenthood. American board certified in both obstetrics and gynecology and reproductive endocrinology and infertility, Dr. Nicholas Shama is a very caring, compassionate, expert physician that understands not only the medical but also the emotional toil of infertility on his patients. When it's time, get personalized care from Dr. Nicholas Shama at IVF Michigan Fertility Centers in Michigan and Ohio. Call toll-free 855-952-9600, 855-952-9600. If halal is important to your family, you can trust that Miramar will offer not only the highest quality halal products, but the best tasting and healthiest foods that can be placed on your family table with confidence. Miramar is the first and oldest halal certified food brand in America, serving the Arab and Muslim community and offers a wide range of halal food products. Check out Miramar's halal food selection today by visiting Miramar's exclusive distributor, Ziad Brothers Importing at www.ziad.com. Welcome back and thank you for being with us. Uh, this is Khalil Hashim with the Local Connections and we're talking to uh, Cliff Douglas uh, of the American Cancer Society in regard to vaping. And before we went on the break, uh, uh, you know, we were talking about what we can do 
to put pressure and ask our leadership, uh, you know, on, on the national level to do something about this. So what, 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 is, Cliff, what exactly we need to ask them to do? Well, there's a move in Congress, for example, and thank you for asking the question. It's important. It's a way for all of us to engage. Uh, our That's American really. Cancer Society Cancer Action Network, our advocacy arm, is urging Congress to eliminate flavors uh, in all e-cigarettes. And, you know, that may deny some adults an incentive to use these products instead of smoking cigarettes. So that's not a perfect solution, but it's understood to be very important for protecting our kids because about 95% of kids who use these cigarettes start with flavored products. That's what draws them in, in addition to the, you know, exciting high-tech uh, appearance of, of many of these products. And, you know, another thing that's important is there isn't a lot that we can do individually, but the Centers for Disease Control and the Food and Drug Administration are working very hard to figure out the separate problem with uh, some of these street versions of these products causing widespread um, lung illness and even causing some of those deaths. That's separate from the flavor issue, uh, but, but this side issue is affecting our kids as well because the victims are almost always young people. And so, you know, I think we just have to support our health authorities and getting to the bottom of that and then holding responsible the, the companies or individuals who are producing these products that are causing so much harm. So basically the hook here is the, the flavor in these things for, for young kids. Is that correct? It, it is correct. That, that and then the fact that nicotine, which uh, is included in high doses in some of these vaping products in the United States, is is so addictive that when a, a kid starts to use it, uh, he or she uh, can quickly become physically addicted to these products. And so our government should also be called upon, the, the FDA should be called upon to, to uh, uh, strictly limit the amount of nicotine that, that can be included. You know, in the United Kingdom, where they actually encourage e-cigarette use uh, as a harm reduction option for adults, they strictly limit how much nicotine is there, and they're not facing the kinds of problems we are here in the U.S. I think that's important. So well, 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 the, the reason there, and, and I missed that one, forgive me, please, the reason in England is they're not using as many flavors? They limit flavors. They also very strictly limit marketing so that the industry cannot target kids the way they do here, and sure, sure, they, sure. they place a limit on how much sure. nicotine can be included in these products, yeah. so they may yeah. be helpful to adults who are trying to quit smoking, but they're less likely to addict new users like kids. Absolutely. You know, the other day I was uh, discussing the issue with uh, a couple of people that came from third world countries in the Middle East and others, and, and he's telling me that, you know, governments there are not as proactive as, as, as they are here, and, uh, and he was telling me how fast these things are spreading overseas with, with very little oversight. I mean, that mm. could become an international epidemic. There is that potential. You're exactly right. Uh, the companies stand to make billions of dollars, just as they have and do from uh, selling cigarettes. They've extended their business to vaping products, and they are trying to make inroads in as much of the world as they pop possibly can. And so, for example, while not nearly as popular as here right now, um, e-cigarettes are making their way into uh, a number of Middle Eastern countries, uh, and we have to, you know, we have to hope that the, the governments and health authorities in those countries will not only step up their efforts to uh, fight the tobacco epidemic, the, the you know smoking epidemic, which is the leading preventable cause of death, but also pay close attention to the potential Excellent. for vaping products to reach reach children Excellent. in those countries. Um, I think uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Maliko joined us. Good morning, Dr. Maliko. Good morning. Thank you so much for being with us, uh, Dr. Uh, Glenn Maliko, superintendent of the Dearborn uh, uh, School District. Uh, and we're talking with uh, Cliff Douglas of the American Cancer Society about vaping and how can we protect our kids. And just wanted to, uh, you know, ask you, is this an issue in the Dearborn schools and what is it that you're doing to educate the children? 
Well, I mean, I think it's uh, right now, as you see, it's a national epidemic, so it's going on everywhere. Um, you know, in Dearborn schools, I, you know, I can't say it's any any more than any other place, but the, the reality is, is um, you know, um, that we've, we are concerned. Uh, we're just kind of coming to become aware of some of the, the real issues with this, as I know it's on the news all the time. In fact, um, we've had some... Um, trainings for administrators just on looking at um, what some of these um, what some of these devices that students or others are used that can just hide it from adults and parents like in some cases it might look like it's a, a flash drive or something and it's actually a vape and we weren't aware of this until some of the training that we got last year so we're very concerned it's obviously a health health condition we do have a drug prevention model that we're implementing with Ms. Deneen Charles we have uh, four different community, actually five different community organizations that are helping. And so we're going out and trying to educate, you know, the, the students and the parents for that matter. Um, we've had a few sessions with the parents, um, open sessions at all three of our high schools. Um, but we definitely know we need to do more. And, you know, I, you know, I just drive down the, you know, if I'm going to a store or something or I'm just local and I see... You know, uh, not, I can't say if there are students or not, but I'm at, um, you know, one of the malls or something, and I see, you know, kids going in behind and pulling out baits, you know. So it's definitely a concern, and obviously it's a health, uh, health issue. And I've had a couple parents that have talked to me about issues that their, you know, their children are having. Sure, sure. Well, what should we say to our kids, uh, Dr. Malika? I mean, I think... You know, we're, we have support in the schools if they they want to get help. It you know, I, they need to really get educated on the hazards of these devices, and we we really don't know all the impact. I mean, that's what I'm seeing on the news is what long term, short term. You know, students or kids are dying from this. There, we, there's also potential for these devices that can like light up in your face and you can get severe burns. Um, and, and so they really got to be cautious, and I would say they need to stay away from it. And, uh, you know, um, if they need help, you know, we're there for them. We have our social workers. We have our school administrators who want to assist them. If parents, you know, need assistance, they can reach out to us as well. Again, we have Ms. Deneen Charles and Dr. Rolla Bazzi gates for the district. There were in public schools that are helping. Um, the other thing I would say to parents is, you know, um, one of the things we're doing, we have a bond on the ballot November 5th, and one of the things uh, that we're doing is two things. For safety and security in the school, so we're planning to put, ca you know, cameras everywhere, which will help us, you know, deter some of that if it is going on around the school. And the second thing is we're hearing of, you know, bathrooms and things. And so part of our bond is actually going to pay for upgrading all the bathrooms and making them, um, you know, you, you potentially could have vape detectors and other things to uh, deter usage um, in the schools. Again, I'm not saying we have a, a uh, you know, a problem any worse than anywhere else, but at the same token, I'm not naive to the fact that this is going on, you know, not, not only in Dearborn schools, but the Dearborn community and actually just Michigan and the, the nation. Sure. Have you had any reports in any of your high school people using it? Students using it. I mean, we've had we've had incidents where it's occurred. Yeah, I mean, we've had it. Sure. You know, I, high school. You mean as far as students, right? I'm talking about students. Where and what will yeah. happen yeah. is students are. Um, you know, we have it, it's against board policy, so they're subject to the student code of conduct. But what we'll try to do when we do get a student into a situation is uh, trying to help them get out of the habit you know, the addiction or whatever it may be. So if they're able to get, you know, treatment or if they get um, support or counseling, then we tend to lessen the uh, student code of discipline because we're not, we don't want to, we're not here to discipline per se, but at the same token, it's not allowed in the school. It's a clear violation sure, of Dearborn sure. Public Schools policy. And so we definitely do not tolerate um, any usage at the same token. We're trying to help students in their families so that, you know, they don't continue to use these devices that are harmful to themselves. Does that policy extend to faculty and staff? 
Oh, absolutely. You can uh, no any kind of uh, vaping or smoking or anything is not allowed on school property. It's against board policy in alignment with state law. So mm -hmm. staff, staff and faculty are also prohibited for any cigarettes or any kind of uh, tobacco or and or any drugs or alcohol or anything like that. That uh, that is um, a violation of board policy. Absolutely. Any comments, Cliff? Well, I agree. I agree, and and I want to thank you for uh, for the aggressive approach you're taking. Uh, as uh, we were talking about a few minutes ago, I too have a 16 year old, and he's uh, witnessed a lot of uh, use of these products among his classmates, and and his small school in Ann Arbor um, is is really trying to educate parents and alert them to the problem and to educate kids and be supportive to kids. You know, not punitive, but supportive to sure, the kids. Sure. They, they know what they're, they're dealing with. One thing I'll, I'll note, it's not really getting as much attention right now, but with kids smoking uh, conventional cigarettes a lot less, which is very good news, we, we want to be sure that we don't end up inadvertently incentivizing them by encouraging to, to not vape or quit vaping, to, to actually turn to cigarettes, because for kids or adults, Basically, uh, just about the worst thing you could possibly do instead of vaping is return to cigarette smoking. So we like to keep that on the on the on the the the, the headlines as well, because folks ought to know. And so it's it's probably a good moment just to to let folks know at the American Cancer Society, uh, we're all about supporting people, parents, uh, schools, individual smokers or vapors, whether whether they're adults or kids, and. And we're easy to find at cancer.org, uh, and so you know we, we hope that people will will go there. Or if if I may, just give you our toll free number. That might be a useful reference. Uh, I'm going to ask as, you. As I'm well. going to ask you for that in, in a few minutes, if you don't mind. Sure. I just be, Dr. Maliko is driving to Lansing. I don't want to take more of his time. Oh, is that Dr. right? Maliko, very ahead. quickly. What, yeah, I, yeah, I am what safe, do people... so I'm hands free. I'm hands free. So. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Just wanted to ask you if you want to add something in regard to the bond. I appreciate that opportunity. So I mentioned about the bathrooms. Yeah, we're hoping that the voters will come out on November 5th and support the bond. We have um, aging buildings in our district. We have 12 buildings that are over 90 years old. We have another 12 that are over 60 years old. So 24 of our 35 buildings are um, above 60 years. You know, they're, they're, some of them are you know, they're beautiful, but they're deteriorating. <coughs> we need to upgrade our, our district for our students. If, if there is a yes vote, it results in a no mill increase, meaning current tax value is 4.82 mills. So for taxpayers, there will be no uh, mill increase. And the reason we can do that is because we've invested well in retired old bonds. But we really need this upgrade. It's a $240 million bond. Again, we have aging buildings in our district, and this is really about our students. Just yesterday, it was announced it went public. Lindbergh Elementary was rated a blue ribbon school by the federal government. It's the highest possible honor you can see from the received from the uh, U.S. Department of Education. They only get sure, thirteen sure. out in um, uh, out of forty-five, uh, almost four thousand schools in Michigan. We now have three years in a row. We have ninety-five percent of our oh. students are graduating. We have eighty-six percent going to college. I want to make sure that the infrastructure of the old buildings does not hamper the high quality of education we provide our students. So just in closing Excellent. on that, I appreciate the opportunity. I'd like to say thank you to the, to the citizens for always supporting our students in our school community. Thank you so much, Dr. Maliko. We appreciate it. Um, thank you. Do you have to go? Uh, I'm happy to stay on as long as I can be helpful. Okay. 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 Just that thank you. you, uh, you don't uh, Absolutely. Thank you for your Dr. time. Malika, I really thank okay. you for taking the time to talk to us while you're driving. Drive safely, please. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Take care. Thank you. We're going to take a short break, and then we'll continue the, uh, the discussion with Cliff. Thank you. The Rama Relief Foundation provides humanitarian aid into areas inside of war-torn Syria, as well as aid to the refugees who have fled to the neighboring countries in the Middle East. The foundation offers food baskets, container shipment, mental health, education, soup kitchens, and more. Go to ramarelief.org or call 248-990-4247. Any donation amount made to Rama will go to sustaining many lives. Call now, 248-990-4247. Are you going to start a restaurant or a grocery store soon? 
Do you need floor plans and designs? Call Naichi Abood at 734-744-9796. Do you want to buy kitchen and restaurant equipment at discount prices? Call Naji Abood now, 734-744-9796. New concept products and design, the trademark of kitchen equipment. 5% discount on all purchases of $75,000 or more. New concept products and design, new location. 31185 Schoolcraft in Livonia. Learn more at www.newconceptproducts.com. Call Naji Abood, 734-744-9796. مرحبا سعيد اهلا علا ليش هالمقابله الفاتره هي بيقول المثل لاقيني ولا تغديني يما زعلتي شنو رايك اذا لقيتك وايضا غديتك باحسن مطاعم ميشيغان مطعم عشتها والله فكره افضل الاطباق والمقبلات العربيه والعراقيه واحلى ملقا ولا تنسين اللحوم الطازجه مباشره من ملحمه عشتار لزباين عشتار وملحمه عشتار توفر اختيارات متنوعه من كافه انواع اللحوم وباسعار متميزه وجوده ايضا مميزه ملحمه عشتار تقع على 36865 راين رود في مدينه وأكيد أحلى لمة وأطيب لقمة في مطعم عشتار اللي عنوانه 362515 ماير في مدينة سترلينج هايت هاتف 5866982585 5866982585 586 يلا علا يلا عشتار للجودة وكرم الضيافة عنوان مطعم عشتار When you're looking for the best in optical care, Dr. Imad Nakash is your doctor to see. With years of experience and thousands of successful procedures performed, you can trust your eyes to Dr. Imad Nakash. See Dr. Imad Nakash and his professional staff for your eye care needs. There's two locations to serve you. In Hazel Park, call 248-336-3937. 248-336-3937. In Rochester Hills, call 248-299-3937. That's 248-299-3937. Welcome back and thank you for being with us. Uh, I want to thank Dr. Maliko for being with us. He's driving to Lansing. And we're going to continue the discussion uh, uh, with Cliff Douglas of the American Cancer Society. Uh, Cliff, again, I want to thank you for taking the time to be with us. We originally talked about a 10-minute interview, and you've been with us for over 30 minutes. And, and I well, thank, thank you, you, sir. So much it's a pleasure. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you were saying something before I, uh, I went to Dr. Maliko. If you, I just want you to continue. And at the end, I would like to ask you how we can, you know, people can reach the, uh, the American Cancer Society and we can give them the number and the, uh, and the website. Absolutely. Um, well, one of the things we were talking about is when we're talking about the tobacco epidemic and vaping products are regulated as tobacco products, even though they don't contain tobacco, they in many cases contain nicotine, which is uh, derived from tobacco, and that's the addictive drug. Uh, the, the tobacco epidemic, about 98% of all of the tobacco-related deaths are from conventional cigarette smoking. And among adults, cigarette smoking is still far more uh, common than using e-cigarettes. And so we, we don't want to lose sight of the, you know, the sort of 800-pound gorilla in the room, which is yeah, the need yeah. to not smoke. And as we fight vaping among kids, which is a real concern, uh, we, we do want to try to find that sweet spot where we can uh, disincentivize children from using these very harmful products for children uh, and, and at the same time not inadvertently send those kids to cigarette smoking or adults to cigarette smoking because long-term that, that is unfortunately far worse. So this is uh, it's a complicated picture, but one that we're working hard with with individuals and with our government to try to, to try to improve. You know, you, you you brought up a good point, which is we don't want people to think you know vaping is pretty bad, so I'm better off smoking. And no, you're not. You're not better off smoking. You know, we want you to stay away from both, and specifically to, yeah. to our youth. So this is something very important because we don't want people to go back to that and, and, and something that we're trying to really move them away from. So yeah, that's now, exactly right. Need, and, and, and so please go ahead. No, go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, thank you. The thing that we want to emphasize is that there are a number of uh, approved <laughs> medications 
that the Food and Drug Administration has reviewed and found to be safe and effective that can be used in helping people quit smoking. There are, they're called nicotine replacement therapies. People are familiar in general with the, the patch and gum uh, and inhaler. There are also a couple of other medications used effectively in smoking cessation. And when combined with counseling, and it can be very simple, uh, simple counseling, we know that they can be highly effective. But the, the challenge is that not enough people use them. They're not as appealing as using a cigarette or a vaping device, but they're safe and they're effective and they save lives. Absolutely. You know, I mean, we, I wanted to highlight this issue because we have an epidemic in our community, and that is hookah. And, and what pains me, I mean, when I was growing up, there were only grown men smoked hookah and, and in certain places. Today, I see a lot of young people. I go to all of these uh, hookah places in our area, and they all smoke hookah. And, 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 I mean, I don't know how they figure out hookah is better than cigarette. And studies show that each hookah is worth, I don't know, 20 packs or 15 packs or 10 packs or something like that. I mean, that's like a lot of smoke in one time. And this is why I wanted people to really understand. So how can we get more information? Is it through the American Cancer Society? And what are their numbers and the, you know, websites? And, and please help us with some of the info. Uh, yes, of course. And, and I, I have... Uh family who uh, live in and are from the, the Middle East, and we've talked about this uh, at great length. Uh, hookah is a, is a culturally very popular activity throughout the Middle East. Uh, and, and honestly, I remember trying it myself when I was in Cairo many years ago. And uh, the thing is, is that, uh, as you've just noted correctly, uh, hookah uh, to smoke tobacco poses serious health risks to smokers and also to others who are exposed to the smoke from uh, the hookah. Uh, the charcoal that's used to heat the tobacco can raise health risks, health risks because it produces high levels of carbon monoxide and, and metals and cancer-causing chemicals. Uh, hookah uh, containing uh, nicotine can also be uh, addictive. And so while it can be a very pleasant experience to use with friends, I think that People need to know that the health effects from hookah smoke uh, can be deadly. Uh, they are serious, and it is not a safe alternative to smoking uh, conventional, other conventional tobacco products like cigarettes. Absolutely. So Absolutely. there is a lot of information about that online. And, in fact, the CDC has a, an excellent fact sheet that lays it all out very simply at cdc.gov. Uh, uh, their fact sheet on smoking and tobacco use has a whole section on hookahs. And so I, I do highly recommend that to your listeners. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to the American Cancer Society, how, how can we reach you guys? Well, we would very much like to uh, work with everyone, uh, support your listeners. Uh, we are easy to reach at cancer.org. Again, it's just C-A-N-C-E-R dot O-R-G. And we have a toll-free number where we, can, uh, we have a whole staff uh, at our Cancer Information Service which is there to answer questions about uh, quitting smoking and the, the most effective ways to do that. The number there is 1-800-227-2345. Again, it's 1-800-227-2345. Chris, I can't thank you enough. And before I say thank you, and, and, and uh, is there anything I haven't asked you that people need to know? I think we've really covered it comprehensively, and I, I thank you for uh, having me on a little bit longer. I've really enjoyed the conversation, and I hope that we'll have another opportunity. So thank you again, sir. Absolutely. Thanks again, Cliff Douglas of the American Cancer Society. And, and you live in Ann Arbor, is that correct? I do. I'm at the University of Michigan as well as at the Cancer Wonderful. Society. Wonderful, wonderful. Thanks again. Have a great weekend. I really appreciate your time. Thank you, and likewise. Have a good day. Okay, thank you. We're going to take a short break. We'll be right back. 
If halal is important to your family, you can trust that Miramar will offer not only the highest quality halal products, but the best tasting and healthiest foods that can be placed on your family table with confidence. Miramar is the first and oldest halal certified food brand in America, serving the Arab and Muslim community and offers a wide range of halal food products. Check out Miramar's halal food selection today by visiting Miramar's exclusive distributor, Ziad Brothers Importing at www.ziad.com. The Rama Relief Foundation provides humanitarian aid into areas inside of war-torn Syria as well as aid to the refugees who have fled to the neighboring countries in the Middle East. The foundation offers food baskets, container shipment, mental health, education, soup kitchens, and more. Go to ramarelief.org or call 248-990-4247. Any donation amount made to Rama will go to sustaining many lives. Call now 248-990-4247. When it comes to reproductive medicine, IVF Michigan Fertility Centers are the recognized leaders. With locations in Bloomfield Hills and five other cities in Michigan and Ohio, IVF has experts in all aspects of the field. As a founding member of IVF Michigan Fertility Centers, Dr. Nicholas Shama is one of the leading reproductive endocrinologists in Michigan and Ohio. Dr. Shama has performed over 10,000 IVF cases and has helped thousands of couples fulfill their dreams of parenthood. American board certified in both obstetrics and gynecology and reproductive endocrinology and infertility, Dr. Nicholas Shama is a very caring, compassionate, expert physician that understands not only the medical but also the emotional toil of infertility on his patients. When it's time, get personalized care from Dr. Nicholas Shama at IVF Michigan Fertility Centers in Michigan and Ohio. Call toll-free 855-952-9600, 855-952-9600. Life is a nonprofit charity that's provided humanitarian aid and development to people and communities for over 25 years, regardless of race, color, religion, or cultural background. When disaster occurs here or around the world, Life for Relief and Development rushes in to provide food, medical aid, and shelter to those in need. Please help improve these efforts. Make your tax-deductible donation to Life now at lifeusa.org or call 248-424-7493. Take um, a few minutes to thank uh, Cliff Douglas of the American Cancer Society and Dr. Maliko of the Dearborn School Districts for being with us this this morning to talk about an important issue, and that's vaping. And you know, again, so far, eleven eleven people have died in related to vaping, and uh, allegedly. So, uh, and uh, many, many more, seven hundred and eight hundred uh, cases where people got sick from the materials that they are inhaling. And, you know, we still need a lot more information on that. So you can reach the American Cancer Society. It's cancer.org and get information from there. Please, please, please keep an eye on your children. I talk to my children every day about it. You know, whether it is vaping or cigarettes or any of those bad habits and, you know, their children, you know, when they're adults and they're, they're, they're not, they don't live in my house, they can do whatever they want to do. But as long as they live in my house, again, I go by my rules, obey my rules, and I'm going to make sure that they don't do things that are not good for them or things that I did I don't want them to do. So, uh, uh, Mike, is Jerry with us? Yes, he is. Jerry, good morning. Good morning, Mr. Khalil Hashem, and thank you for taking my call, and thanks to your producer, uh, Mr. Mike Shepka. You know, Mr. Khalil, I want to thank you very much for bringing those uh, distinguished guests. I really appreciate it, and a lot of viewers and listeners, uh, they, they appreciate that. Mr. Khalil Hashim, I do believe we are facing a very serious crisis. Our youth, our children, and then grandchildren, you know, it's not just become a national issue but become an international uh, issue unless if we do something about it uh, Mr. Khalil Hashim we are facing a disaster I mean like you said yeah. earlier yeah. 11 lives we lost in just a few days and that number will repeat more and more we have to put a stop to it Mr. Khalil Hashim so um, I would uh, love uh, to see uh, a, a government or even an international society, uh, even if it gets to the United Nations, 
because like you say right now the e-cigarettes uh they are going even overseas now the problem exactly. is with the khalid hashim uh i'm sorry uh khalid uh the hookah and then we have what they call it uh, uh, uh medical marijuana you know if it is used for a regular uh, uh, uh health issue is okay but they've been abusing it, uh, Mr. Khalil Hashim. And yeah, uh, yeah, you see in yeah. every corner, uh, there is this sensor. Uh, in every corner, there is a hookah shop. I'm not against those people. Everybody is entitled to do uh, business. But we need a clean business, not to destroy our kids, our youth. So I appreciate your show, Mr. Khalil Hashim. Thank you. I appreciate and it, thank Jerry. you thank for you so uh, the Arab voice weekend. of... Uh, Thank you, Mr. Khalid. God bless you. Absolutely. Thank you, Jerry. Jerry is one of our loyal listeners, and we thank him for taking the time to call and share. And, and, and here's, you know, I want to bring something to you, to your attention, and that is being active. I understand that a good number of our community came from countries where our voice it could not be heard because you're not connected to the right people or you don't have the money or you don't have the power. America is different. America is more a representative society. You know, here you can make a difference. Here you can pick up the phone and talk to your congressperson, talk to your uh, representative in Lansing, talk to your uh, city, talk to your city officials. And, and I urge you to be courteous, to be nice, to understand that what the issue is, do not, uh, you know, try to get involved in things that you don't understand. You have to understand the issue. You have to know what you want, and then you can ask these people to help you. You can ask these people to create legislations and laws and regulations to protect us. So when we say contact your Congress people, you, you know, you want to do it in a, in, a, in a very polite way. You know, something happened recently where one of the Congress people in this area voted or did made a decision that the community didn't agree with and you know people started really bashing that person and 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 being ugly this isn't how to you know how to do it that person made a decision that we don't agree with we meet with that person and we let that person know that we don't you know we don't agree with your decision you need our support and we need your support as well it's a two-way street and this is how we do it you know we don't just uh, uh, take on the worst thing about social media and Facebook in general is Facebook allowed idiots to challenge the intelligent and allowed cowards to just, you know, spray all kind of hate and insults and whatever it is instead of talking about something in an intelligent way. And I'm not saying that we shouldn't hold that Congress people, uh, uh, c congressperson responsible. We should but in a very civilized manner. We meet with that person. We're a huge voting block, very important. We can make a difference in voting, and we let that person know, you made a decision that we don't agree with, and we're a huge block of your constituents. So we can make a difference. If, if you continue doing that, or if you don't do the right thing the way we want it, then things are not going to go, you know, we're not going to vote for you. We're not going to give you the support. And this is how we do it. So when we ask you to get in touch with people, it, we, you, you should do it in a very organized, you should do it in a very civilized and a very nice way. And before you do that, you need to be educated on the issue. So you, when you speak, you speak in an intelligent way. And if you don't know, this is when a community can form a committee, and that committee can reach out to, you know, to, to the authorities and make a difference. Now, on the local level and on the, on the personal level, you can try to get educated as much as possible and make sure you educate your children. This is something very important. And it's a very important subject, and it could become an epidemic. We don't want it to become an epidemic. So I just wanted to explain that point. So I want to thank you so much for listening to this issue. And we have a few minutes left, and I want to give you a quick update which is a totally different issue. It's a quick update on the housing market. You know, the housing market is still going strong. However, we've seen a change, a change that, so, you know, for so many years, uh, for so many months maybe, or maybe, maybe over a year or two years now, 
the prices have gone up so fast to a point where a lot of people couldn't really get the homes they wanted to get. Well, we've seen the the market is leveling a little bit. It, the prices are not as high as they used to be. Homes are sitting on the market a little longer, and that allows you as a buyer to really bargain, um, you know, take your time to select your home. Uh, you don't have to go see it and rush right away and trying to put an offer on it. We have time. We can negotiate. We'll negotiate a good price for you. This is a great time to really buy. And uh, if you're looking to buy a home, you let me know. I'll be more than happy to work with you and find you the home that you're looking for. The number is 313-819-0101. You can go to uh, michigan.com. My information is there as well. Again, this is a great time to buy because we can bargain. The, the most expensive deals are done in May in June, uh, May and June, and and sometimes in July. But now that the the prices have leveled a little bit, so if you own a property and you want to sell it, this is a good time to sell it as well because you don't want the prices to drop even more. So if you have a property to sell, let me know. I'll be more than happy to work with you. You also need to keep in mind is you're not gonna get the prices that were going on in May and June. So you need to keep that in mind. When we show you the numbers, you need to account for the drop in prices. For example, if a home is selling what's selling for and the number shows the market value in June and in May, $400,000, you need to account for dropping the price a little bit so you can sell it. The idea of putting a, a home on the market is not just to put it on the market. You want to sell it. You want to take a look at Market value and market condition. Market value tells you is based on a 90-day uh, review of what been sold in that neighborhood. And market condition, where are we in the market? Are we up or down? Are we you know, going flat? What, where, where we are? And right now, we're leveling a little bit, which is good for the market. That correction is always good because you don't want the, the, uh, the prices to continue shooting up. So you need help, you let me know. You have a question, if this is the best time for you to buy, let me know. I'll be more than happy to work with you and give you the information you need. I will tell you the truth. I'm, I don't, you know, I, I, you know the, the Lord provides for everybody. I don't, I'm not going to tell you things that, that, to impress you and then make you buy and then you're going to come back and tell me, you know what, that's not what the truth is. I tell you the truth. Yeah, some people are not going to tell you the truth. That's, that's, that's on them. But I'll tell you the truth, whether it is concerning your home, your property, or whether concerning, you know, if you're buying property. So the number is 313-819-0101. If you're ready to buy, give me a call. If you're ready to sell, give me a call. If you have commercial space you want to do something with, again, we'll be more than happy to work with you. One last time, 313-819-0101. I want to thank you so much for listening, for being with us for uh, this hour. I want to thank my guests. Uh, uh, Cliff Douglas and Dr. Maliko, and I want to thank Mike for uh, our, our producer, and I want to thank Laila Hasni for giving us the opportunity to to do this. And foremost, thank you for listening to us. Bye now.